I want to firstly thank everyone for patiently uh, still sitting here and still uh, awake. I unfortunately woke up at 3.30 in the morning. So uh, I'm going to keep it very, very simple and very, very short. So I guess about six, seven minutes and I'm going to be out of here. So <clears throat> the difficult task of following on session two of emerging technologies in solar. Uh, just to give you a brief, uh, Solar Pro Shri Shakti is, uh, was founded in 1999. I have taken over only since August. Uh, but I want to share this slide as soon as possible with you. So <clears throat> I've been anxiously waiting in the morning that someone should not uh, present this similar thing uh, what I was trying to uh, portray here. So <clears> when <throat> and business of solar is akin to uh, running a car with a spare tire, distilled water and engine oil if you, if you may. So if you see the new trends, all the new contracts are coming for about 15 years. And one of the only ways that we can think about those 15 years is the use of technology. So <clears throat> the agenda being emerging uh, technology in solar. So we've tried to look at what could be those emerging trends. So what if, for example, we could predict failure? We could predict failure uh, minutes before, hours before, even months before. Is that of any value to us? So especially as asset managers or ORM providers, uh, this kind of information obviously is very critical both for uh, human life and plant life. So <clears throat> there is a talk of something called as machine learning and we will try demystifying it without you guys losing focus. So <clears throat> we are looking at machine learning which is essentially certain algorithms that we uh, derive using patterns of SCADA data. How much SCADA data is available today? That I think some of our earlier panelists have already spoken about that. So <clears throat> besides coming up with predictive failure before it actually happens, we are also talking about forecasting generation. We are looking at optimizing your trackers and your robotic bots. Also, it can put your system into a standard operating procedure in case of a disaster. So let's say a hailstorm or something which requires your panel to go 90 degrees, all that can be done. So <clears throat> if you're wondering what is machine learning, uh, <clears throat> for the ones who don't want to learn too much, please look at the right where you put certain data in and you get some predictive stuff out. For those who want to know more, it's basically you run certain algorithms, you test them out. This is a experiential and iterative process where essentially you keep looking at the responses and the predictions and you keep tweaking it. So that is your own intellectual property of sorts and you will get certain behavior which can start predicting things for you. Uh, one of the other areas that uh, emerging technology and uh, we are trying to do some early stage things in solar here, augmented reality and data visualization. So what if all our ONM engineers on a smartphone or a tablet can point at any equipment and get augmented data? So data could be things like uh, what are the warranties, what are the AMC, what tests have been conducted, what are the SOPs on it, you know, all kinds of things which are visually in front of you. You don't have to go back to headquarters and hunt for some of that data. It's all there in front of you. This is just another broad example of for you to visualize what all we can put there in terms of even training of personnel. Someone talked about high attrition. Um, so at SolarPro, uh, we are marrying artificial intelligence by a uh, couple of things. One is uh, what we call a solar plant information modeling. I can share the next slide with you. We have an MIS uh, for predicting certain uh, things. Uh, we do have a real-time ticketing system where we use smartphones to look at and raise tickets. Uh, we are, we've are invested into a very scalable HRMS, human resource management system, so that we can manage 1,000 megawatt, 2,000 megawatt worth of assets. This is just a snapshot of what a drill down could look like. So because of the amount of vast data that we have, if you could just move around and have your specific data, a part number or something that you would want, you know, that is the potential of such augmented reality. Um, so I'm borrowing something from building information modeling, where essentially in the building and construction space, people talked about uh, 3D visualization of something. Then the fourth dimension was scheduling what should come first. So for example, it's relevant to our solar uh, domain as well. Uh, panels may come first. We may need to put them into warehouses. So scheduling is another key area. Cost estimation is equally important where, you know, it's not uh, the build is spread over six months or the spend is one sixth of, let's say, a million dollars. There are certain ups and downs to it, which is what we call as uh, 5D. Uh, 
the 7b part is essentially onm it is where you can visually take around your smartphone or your tablet look at an asset and be able to resolve whatever the issue that you were looking at um this is common i would like to skip it i think it's already been covered with regards to uh, robots drones is also a common emerging tech not so common is something called as uh, passive innovations in um, panels so where you have zero water situations or where you have political sensitivities to water there is technology which is hydrophobic nanotech coatings today it is expensive a little it can't be an afterthought it has to be done at the panel manufacturing level we are also for the indian market looking at doing some proprietary tests for a coating which is anti static so it can reduce 70 to 80% uh, soiling but it's still under testing so because in india we need things cheaper hopefully even the hydrophobic nanotech should come uh, cheaper over a period of time uh, i just want to take the opportunity of highlighting some uh, this particular chart which is uh, which is close to me because there is an expectation at site that we make everything look like that top corner you know dry barren lands and that is not what we stand for we all of us here are sustainable companies we are green companies and we need to look at holistic methods of how we intend to manage these sites for 25 years under pressure from clients or uh, the best practices which we've borrowed wrongly we've asked to put herbicides someone will make a suggestion why don't you use salt they both pollute the soil it is not a sustainable method in 4 to 5 years we will start seeing issues with these things we need to get our act together and look at managing vegetation um <clears throat> this is my last slide for the day so it's a quick in uh, this thing one so uh, one of the things also in terms of simple innovation is use of uh, guard dogs because they're better uh, as a deterrent uh, be it a human being be it an animal uh, they're better at night duty they don't get drunk at night at least um we can use certain sensors uh one of the things lastly i want to highlight is things like uh peacocks dying at site snakes dying at site we are waiting for wildlife protection to come at our doorstep so we need to find uh solutions to this we can't sort of wash our eyes away from this and as a passing thought even uh transmission line we should consider having certain bird diverters because we do have some migratory birds who travel so with this i would like to conclude my simple presentation thank you for your patience thank you very much